here from Hopcow 2, back for another beer review. So I'm going to use a brand spanking new glass, <coughs> a gifted glass as a matter of fact. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, gifted from Sharon, Lambton Botlow. Cheers Sharon, thanks for that, uh, much appreciated. Very, very generous lady, uh, young Sharon. Um, received a few items of glassware over the, the time that I've known Sharon, along with a few um, sneaky beers for me to try out. Anyway, I'm going to use the Sarah Nevada pint glass with the Deeds Brewing, the Traveller. So they use. Um, let me recap on this mosaic and Nelson Savon hops um, to give it the um, obviously the, the the gooseberry sort of um, flavours that you get from the Nelson. Um, what else comes from that? Uh, white white wine, sort of white grape sort of flavours that come from those hops. Um, and someone posted the other day on one of the Facebook pages. Um, they were doing a Cooper's wit um, and the suggestion on hops so I've been wanting to do it for a while um, but more of an all grain wit beer and using something like a lemon drop or a um, mm, the Nelson and seeing what comes of that but um, Bearing in mind that you get a lot of the spice and cloves that come from a, um, a good quality yeast when you do a um, proper uh, wit beer. Um, I just thought something a little bit citrusy um, and obviously just a small amount to get some light flavours happening would, would work quite well. Anyway, this is about the beer review. Um, I'll just read out what's on the can. So before I start, it is uh, 2.8 standard drinks, a 440ml can, um, which gives us... Where am I reading it? Uh, 8% uh, ABV, uh, alcohol by volume. So... The can states, imagine a tram in Vermont, this fantastical imaginary beer tram is a direct route between New England's most revered, revered breweries and this beer is a traveller for you on your journey. Mosaic Nelson Savon keep you company, up front juicy tropical notes, floral and fruity aromas and background notes of uh, white wine and gooseberries. So I always got gooseberries from um, using Nelson. Um, it was quite a while ago that I used Nelson in one of my beers, but um, uh, yeah, I didn't mind it. Um, I feel it's got its place in a, in certain beers. Um, this is a um, <clears throat> a double New England IPA, by the way. Um, I really like the, the can art on this one. Um, it's plain, but it's also, um, I guess, um, reminds me of um, a, su a sunrise or a sunset over the mountains. As you can see, the circle and you know, and then the the, the peaks. Um, I'm guessing that's what it's meant to um, represent. Um, can stands out in the fridge. Um, it's a little bit different than their their usual labels. Um, if anyone knows Deeds Brewing, um, they have sort of a label or um, sort of fonting that is pretty much the same across the board, but they have they use different colours within those within those labels. So same pattern. Uh, same sort of label, but um, uh, different colours. We'll crack this one. Ooh, yeah. 
and the other pikes. Um, double IPA. I think it was a dipper, not a New England IPA, but a, a, a dipper, double IPA, has top of the list for me. Um, the top of my list was the Corbin D, um, but that Pike's um, double IPA sort of just just nudged the um, the, the top of the list. Um, I'm going to have another one. Once again, I think I stated I'd like to have those beers side by side and have a... Um, a dipper off, if you want to call it that, and um, a grudge match. Let's see which one I actually do prefer the most. I'm feeling it's going to be the Pikes because that just blew me away that beer. Anyway, oh man, this smells awesome. Pour it before I spill it everywhere. Okay, we're getting a pineapple juice, a pine orange sort of colour to that. I gave that glass a good clean but it um, might not be a genuine pint glass. We've got some bubbles clinging to the side of that and obviously um, it's not pouring a very um, compact fluffy frothy head. Oh, the aromas are on this beer, I'll tell you what, they just stand right out. Um, oh, man, it's juicy. That's takes me back to the six strings Aloha and Pog Juice. I really enjoyed that beer. That's probably one of my uh, top of the list for a um, for a double Nipia. Um, well, extremely juicy anyway. Just point out on this one also, uh, Carwin Sellers is part of the the collaboration with the. Deeds Brewing. Uh, um, they're from um, Glenaris uh, here in Australia. Um, oh, so, so tropic, you know, just oh, fruity. The Nelson really works well in this. It's just that really fruity flavour, and then that's that um, the gooseberries and the white wine off the back of it really adds to the depth of the beer. Um, Sickly sweet, but I don't mind that. There's not a lot of people that are liking the sickly sweet flavours of the of the double um, New England IPAs or standard um, New England IPAs. Um, it's all a fad for some, but uh, in saying that, um, once again, I think I stated in one of the other videos, um, there's not many beers that I don't like. Um, you can pick at them. You can always find something that. Maybe a little bit over the top. It's probably just a good beer to sit on. Not for too long, because, you know, like, it's it's got to be a thirst quenching. Uh, those who like their breakfast juice beers, um, this is definitely one of those. Um, and would go well with some um, fruit loaf bread with a shitload of butter. Anyway... Um, well worth a try delicious and um, not quite as good as some of the the 
Dublin New England IPAs that I've had but it's up there and I would purchase that again um, without a doubt um, oops, I think it was about 12 bucks a can um, considering the alcohol content you have standard drinks in it um, it's not really that bad a value I think people see the price and they think oh well that's just way over price but when you think about it um, some people spend more on whiskey cheers